verse 23. I want to show you how Jesus exercised dominion over circumstances in a, in a way that provided protection for him and for others, All right? Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. All right, hold, stop right there for a second. Something stood out to me, and I, I'm, it just stood out, right? When Jesus cast out a devil, it says, and he rebuked the spirit with his word, right? He's, he, many times it says that he talked to a specific thing. He rebuked the fever, and it left Peter's mother-in-law, right? So we could go into these different situations, and every time it said he rebuked something, it always told what he rebuked, okay? Now, here it says, uh, Why are you fearful, O ye little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Notice he didn't rebuke Satan. He didn't rebuke Satan. He rebuked the wind and the seas. You got that? He spoke to the wind and the seas and said, Peace, be still. He didn't cast the devil out of the waves. <laughs> okay, you understand? Now, I'm not, notice, the reason there's a storm is because there's a devil. All right? And the, the, you say, Curry, it's just, a, it's how it all collides up there and it does it. Okay. But guess what? That wouldn't have happened if Satan hadn't tempted Adam and Eve. So it always goes back to him. But notice Jesus did not rebuke Satan here. He rebuked the effects of the wind and the sea. Now notice how he did it. He didn't say, wind and sea, storm, go away. He didn't say that. Why? Why would you want to send it to somebody else? He said, peace, be still. And there was a great calm. Right Now notice, it says uh, in verse 26, and there was a great calm. Now look back at verse 24. And behold, there arose a great tempest. Notice, Jesus' power had to exceed the power of the problem by at least one degree. Do you get that? For the problem to stop, for the answer to stop the problem, the answer has to be more powerful than the problem. Does that make sense? Okay. So the power in Jesus was stronger than whatever power caused that great tempest. Amen? His peace, that calm, was greater than the storm. Well, now we know that, and now this, notice what he said. When he said, peace be still, what was he saying? He was saying what was in him. Why? Because he, he was peace. He had peace. Do you get that? He didn't get up there in fear and trembling and, um, okay, okay I commit. No. He got, I'm, okay, my vision of it, my, my, the way I picture it, is he had to walk to the front of the boat, right past all the disciples, as he's talking. Oh, ye of little faith, what, why, why are you so afraid? What's going on? And he had to walk right past them, got up at the front of the boat, and goes, peace, be still. And I'm pretty sure he looked around at them with that same look on his face. Why? Because peace was in him. He released his peace. Okay, remember when he said, when you go into a house, what did he say? See if there's a son of peace. If the son of peace abides there, then your peace will rest upon it. When you go there, say, peace, be upon this house. Why? Because he, he, he expected them to have peace. When, okay, what was the greatest example of Jesus' peace? He was asleep in the back of the boat. And the, I mean, the waves were covering the boat, and he's asleep. Now, he had peace, and then he got up, and he put out peace. Do you understand that? You can't give what you don't have. 
Now, as a believer, you have that peace. Why? Because he said, I, my peace, not peace like the world has. What, what, how does the world have peace when there's calm and no conflict? But he said, that's not the kind of peace I get. I don't give you peace when there's no problems. I give you peace in the middle of the problems. Do you get that? He said, my peace I give you. That's the peace you have. You have the same peace that can sleep in the back of the boat while the storm is trying to sink you. That's the peace you have. Now, the problem is most people never let that peace umpire their mind, like, like Philippians says. Never lets it guide them. It never, why? Because fear comes in and their head gets full of fear. Why? Because your head gets full of facts. You have to realize facts don't count. They don't matter. Faith matters. Faith dictates the facts if you'll use it. And facts will change to align with your faith if you will use faith slash equals authority. You got that? 